So, um, for a little while now, there's been um, some rumblings, some murmurings, some rumors, if you will, uh, that Microsoft will. is is considering bringing uh, a few of its Xbox exclusives to like PlayStation. Obviously, they're on Xbox, and they're on a lot of them, or if not all of them, are on PC nowadays. Uh, but also possibly bringing them to PlayStation and Switch. So there's a little bit of precedence for this because like Ori and the Blind Forest was on um, on uh, Nintendo Switch. I don't remember if it came to PlayStation or not, but like Cuphead came to both of them. Now that's obviously mm-hmm. Cuphead's not a, a first party studio. Uh, the developer that made Cuphead, I don't believe is a first party studio unless that's another one of the things they inqui- acquired recently. Um but it was a it was an exclusive game at least for a while, and then it ended up coming to other right. devices. But um, so Tim Stewart, who is the CFO of Xbox, has said kind of like back in the November's time, he he was at a, a kind of having a, a at a Microsoft gaming kind of conference and said that um, he said quote not announcing anything broadly here, but our mission is to bring our first party experiences and subscriptions. Uh, services to every device that can play games. That means TVs, that means oh, mobile devices, right. yeah. that means uh, even competitors like PlayStation and Nintendo. And again, that was a while back and we've heard that and we knew that that was kind of their things. And Phil Spencer did kind of come out and not necessarily refute that, but there were some questionings being thrown out there and, and Phil Spencer kind of put out the quote that they had no plans to bring Game Pass to PlayStation or Nintendo. And of course, hmm. it, it would make sense that he would say that you got to kind of read between the lines a little bit because more really it's not up to him whether that comes or not. I bet if Nintendo and, mm. and PlayStation were like, Hey, we are open to the idea of that. I'm sure the, his, his quote would have been like, we're absolutely interested in this, but the way that he worded it, I think really is more about like, Hey, you know, this isn't up to us. We're not necessarily looking to do that because we don't expect that's going to be the thing. So then fast forward a little bit. Uh, and then some people like Jeff Grubb and Steven Totillo, which are, um, with Giant Bomb and then formerly Kotaku for Steven and a couple of other things, uh, started chiming in saying that they had heard that Microsoft was working on bringing Sea of Thieves to the Nintendo Switch and to the PlayStation. Hmm. And then, so more people are kind of coming in here and, and, and opening this door uh, that they that their sources or direct sources are saying that this is something that's being at least explored, not necessarily a done hmm. deal, but that it's going to be looked into into, into doing. Uh, and then we had um, the CEO of which Microsoft, would be, which would be not too crazy considering it's a Ubisoft game, right? And see if these Ubisoft or no, no. See if these is a Microsoft Studios game, just like uh, Microsoft Studios. Is that, is that yeah, right? you're thinking Skull and Bones. That's right, Skull and Bones. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, you're, uh, so the two games in particular, uh, Sea of Thieves was one of the ones mentioned, but also Hi-Fi Rush has been mentioned a lot about mm-hmm. possibly being one oh. of these games that's coming to PlayStation and and possibly Switch as well. Um, but then the CEO of, of Microsoft was out at a, at a, at a convention and he was talking, he had this quote, he said, um, with the Activision, I think we have a chance of being a really good publisher. And quite frankly, on Sony, Nintendo, PC, and Xbox, we're excited about oh, that wow. and the acquisition closing Microsoft Blizzard acquisition. Uh, and I'm glad that we got through it. And then, you know, there was a couple of questions that were after that. And he said, look, we think, we think that now we have the ability to do what we've, uh, to do what we always set out to do, which is to build great games and deliver them to folks across all platforms, which is Xbox consoles, PCs, and including mobile gaming and cloud gaming. So this would kind of lend itself, what kind of gives this at least school of thought some credence is because a lot of last generation, there was a bunch of talk about like, man, should Microsoft completely just get out of the hardware game altogether mm-hmm. and just become a publisher? So it seems right, like yeah. that, that, and obviously there was never any kind of confirmation or even rumors that that's the direction they were looking to go necessarily. But conventional wisdom was like, man, they're, they're have struggled so much in the, in the hardware space. It's like, why not just go this route? I was one of those people who's like, Hey, I'd be all for this. I think this would be a great idea. And I guess that there's no real reason they couldn't make hardware and still follow that strategy. It seems a little silly to do them both, but I mean, then again, yeah, if they I, have I data it's saying that it's money, a good right? idea, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe, just, I, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it's like Microsoft. I think if you stay in the console game, mm-hmm. let's say you stay in the console game, but you do what you're saying yes. and you start being a publisher, then like you're really losing the console wars. And I wonder if that just the optics of that 
isn't good. You know, they've already kind of lost the console yeah. war in the sense of uh, units sold. But now you're going to kind of release something, but then you're not going to have almost any exclusives for it. So then that'll drive down sales even more. And then I just wonder if the optics of like your hardware doesn't barely sell anything, but your games do good. I just wonder if that's a good look or not. Right. Not I don't. you would lose a bunch of money, but I would just think the R&D and everything that goes into knowing that you're going to use a failing product is just is an interesting thought. So I wouldn't do it. I would rather them just <laughs> if they're going to explore this. I'd rather right. them just go to being a publisher personally. That's the route that right, I would like Sega. suggest mm -hmm. them going and that I would, I guess my preference really would be for them to go just so they could focus in on that and hopefully do that really well. Cause they haven't, don't have the best track record in that direction either of late, you know, in the last mm -hmm. several years, but think of it this way. And I know that these are different things, but just, you know, kind of an analogy, if you will, Google makes the pixel. They also make Android that goes on a whole mess of other crap that comes out and lots of other yeah. devices. And they don't care yeah. whether the Pixel is the best seller. They don't really care. But they get if you want the best version, the cleanest, you know, vanilla Android, and that's your, your, what you're gaming for, here's the mm -hmm. thing. Microsoft has a Surface line of computers and tablets and whatnot. They also provide Windows for a ton of other manufacturers that put all their right, stuff and yeah. everything. They don't care that there's whether their sells the best or not, but they will tell you every single day that that's the best experience for it. So, I mean, you right. could say that there's already areas where you could point to like, Hey, here's spots where the hardware, you know, sales is what it is. I mean, maybe they've been at the game so long that it's like R and D on a new machine is really just like, yo, AMD, you making this? Yep. Okay, cool. Here's what the chassis is going to look like. Maybe it's not, mm. maybe it's not that much to it to where they're not really concerned about that. It probably doesn't help or doesn't hurt that they're, you know, a trillion dollar company. They could stand to lose a little bit, maybe. I, I don't know. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah. If they go that route, they've got to have something data wise that tells them this is the direction we need to go. I, I wouldn't necessarily think of going that way. I would think, yeah, just become a, a really cool publisher or whatever. And you could make the argument that, that the CEO's comments basically already exist because i mean they already public i mean they're the owner and technically the publisher of of minecraft which is on multiple uh systems they're gonna have call of duty and anything from blizzard and and activision that's gonna whatever it goes on they're technically the publisher of so you could say that these comments are really just talking about that there's nothing more to them than that right there but it seems like based on some of these things coming out from sources and whatnot that it looks like they might be opening up more and more of it and even if they opened up their entire catalog and said, anything that we make, we're putting anywhere. And let's say that Nintendo and Sony still, they're like, no, but we're, we're cool to take your games, but we don't want Game Pass. They make money where it's sold on those other ones. And then if you get it on the Xbox and you get Game Pass, then you get it the whole day and date, whatever, you know, thing that they talk about. So it's like, I, I don't know really that there's a huge downside, any direction for them. I mean, it's a Does similar that... strategy to Sony putting their games on place on a PC. Right. It's kind of like double dipping in a way for them. If 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 Xbox if their games do go to the other consoles, does that mm -hmm. put pressure on the other consoles to make their games available not just on PC but on the other consoles as well? I don't think that it does, at least not at this point or or definitely not from a oh they're doing this so we have to lockstep match it and like down the road right. they could maybe you know the the landscape changes to a point where they now have to do that to stay competitive in some, you know, some way. But I don't mm -hmm. think immediately or even soon after that, if that's the way they went, that that would necessarily mean yeah. that one way or the other personally. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. Yeah, I think that, you know, people like Nintendo, I don't think will ever feel that pressure. Yeah. To bring their games to more places than just the Nintendo. No matter how loud you know the I mean? internet yells at them. Yeah. I don't think no, so. I mean, it's, it's so different than Sega. You know, it's so different yeah. than when Sega got out of the hardware game and it's like, oh, Sonic's on Nintendo. That's weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just don't know if there will ever be a day where, like, mm. you just see regular old Mario on PlayStation. Right, right. You know what I mean? Or Zelda or, you know, mm -hmm. Samus. Sure. You know, they've got so many characters that feel locked to the Nintendo. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I could see, and I don't really see Sony doing that either, especially if, 
if they take a step outside of the hardware game, then there's no real reason to have your games go to the hard, the other hardware. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. 